This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It's this to the power of this to the power of eight to the power of negative X to the power of negative one is equal to the one third root of 125. I don't believe a fractional index is defined for a root, but I think we can figure this out anyway. If you wanna try it on your own, pause it right now because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. We're gonna end up using all these exponent notes to solve it. This is called a power tower, and we're gonna evaluate it from the top down. So we're gonna focus on the x to the negative one first, and that's gonna use these notes right here. x to the negative one power will equal one over x to the positive one power, and that's the same thing as one over x. So we can change this up here to one over x. And then next, let's bring in the negative, scoot this over and bring in the eight. Now we have eight to the power of negative one over x. That's gonna use these same notes again. Eight to the power of negative one over x will equal equal one over eight to the power of positive one over X. So we can change this into this. And then next we can look at the fourth root of three. That'll end up using these notes right here. The fourth root of three will equal three to the one fourth power. So we can change this inside here into three to the one fourth power. And now we have something to an exponent, whole thing to an exponent. That's gonna be using these notes right here. In this case, you end up multiplying the two exponents. So we're gonna multiply this one fourth times all this. And after we multiply these, we can make them a single fraction. It's three to the power of one over the quantity four times eight to the power of one over x. And now we can look at this piece. This is also gonna use these notes. The ninth root of five can be rewritten as five to the one ninth power. So we can change this to five to the one ninth power. And then once again, this will multiply by all of this. So the one ninth will multiply by the three to all of this. Let's move all this up. Let's change the three into a three over one. And then after we multiply across, this nine will go on bottom. So we have five to the power of three of all this over nine. We can change this nine into three squared. And now the top top and the bottom have matching bases. They both have a base of three. So we can use these notes here. Anytime the bases match on top and bottom, you end up subtracting the exponents. So to simplify all this, we're gonna end up subtracting this exponent minus this exponent. It's gonna be equal to this right here. So we can change all of this into this. And now the left-hand side is done. Now let's look at the right-hand side. This is another radical, so we're gonna use these notes here. We have a base of 125 and a root of one third. So this will be equal to a base of of 125 and it's going to be one over one third. This will be the same thing as this and we can change it up here. Now let's simplify the one over one third. One over one third basically means the same thing as one divided by one third. And anytime you divide a fraction, you can end up multiplying and flip the fraction. A lot of people call this keep change flip. You keep the first number, change the divide to a multiply, and flip the one third into a three over one. And then one times three over one is three. So this one over one third is equal to three. So we can change this exponent into three. Now for the 125, we have a base of five over here. We should also try to get a base of five over here. And 125 is equal to five cubed because five times five times five is 125. And then from here, we have another one of these situations where we have a base to an exponent, whole thing to an exponent. We're gonna end up multiplying the exponents. So this is gonna change into five to the power of three times three. And three times three is equal to three squared. And now let's compare the two sides. Since these bases match and they're not equal to one, negative one, or zero, this will only be true if this exponent equals this exponent. For the next step, let's add two to both sides. That'll give us one over the quantity four times eight to the power of one over x equals four. Next, we can multiply both sides by four. On the left-hand side, this four and this four will cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, four times four is 16. Let's give ourselves a little more room and let's move this eight to the top. We can use these notes backwards. The one over eight to the power of one over x, that'll equal eight to the power of negative one over x. And now we have an equation where this side has a base of eight and this side has a base of 16. Both eight and 16 can be expressed with a base of two. Eight is the same thing as two cubed, and 16 is the same thing as two to the fourth power. And then using these notes here, this exponent is gonna multiply by this exponent, giving us two to the power of negative three over x. And then let's take this exponent and move it out here. Now we have two to the power of negative three over x, equals two to the power of four. Since these two bases match and they're not equal to one, negative one, or zero, this will only be true if the exponents are equal to each other. And now 
we have negative three over x equals four. From here, we can multiply both sides by x over four. On the left-hand side, this x and this x will cancel each other out. And that'll leave us with negative three over four. And then on the right-hand side, this four and this four will cancel each other out, leaving us with x. And now we have our value for x. In this given equation, the solution for x is negative three-fourths. Let's put a box around it. How exciting. If you want to fine tune your algebra skills so it'll be easier to solve problems like this, Brilliant.org has you covered. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI, and all of them are interactive, which is the most effective way to learn. I love going through these tricky algebra challenges, but sometimes it's hard to know what to do next. With Brilliant, it's always easy to know what to do next. The interactive lessons are all in a logical order and they're very well thought out. If you're ever stuck on a step, they have hints and explanations to move you along. Along. It really is a fun way to learn. There are courses on geometry, algebra, calculus, vectors, probability. They also have science courses, programming, artificial intelligence, data analysis, and much more. To try Brilliant for free, visit brilliant.org slash andymath or scan the QR code on the screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You can also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. How exciting.